Joanne. Well, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, and your camera's working today. It is. I've got everything ready, live streams going. It's fantastic. Awesome. Good. Everything looking good other than Claude? <laughs> 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 well, I, feel, I feel like I know you personally after watching all the interviews that you've done that are all posted all over YouTube and your Tom Brokaw interview. And yeah. Oh, yeah, it's just been a lot over the last 20 years. I bet. I bet it keeps you on your toes, though, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I think that one thing that I regret in all this is even right from day one when 9 11 happened that I never marked down all the interviews and where I did them to around the world because for them, five, the first five days while people were here, I was doing about 50 to 60 interviews a day with different media all over the world. And, and, and I regret not marking that down. Yeah. Yeah. Newspaper, magazines, you know, everything. You forgot me. You were my first guest. At, well, after the Salvation Army Officer, I had you on. Yeah, but yeah. You're, you're not that important. You live next door. <laughs> That's true. And we talk like at least twice a day. Right? Yeah, you were, you were just a high school teacher. Yeah, that's right. And the Rogers TV reporter. Yes, yes, of course. My big question that I always have is, do you really have to kiss the fish? Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not even open for negotiation. Yeah, it, yes. it depends on who do it. I, 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 I screeched in some people from New York, yeah. uh, three or four girls. And I told them, I said, uh, you don't have to kiss the fish if you're willing to kiss me. They all kiss the fish. <laughs> but I said, don't be, don't be upset or disappointed. Everybody takes the fish. So go ahead. Well, <laughs> it's, it's at a hundred right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I grew up in Wisconsin, so for us, our big tradition is New Year's Eve. You drink as much as you can, okay. and then on New Year's Day, you go and we call it polar bearing, and we go into Lake Michigan and streak and be in the water as long as we can, and then come back and sober up with some hot toddies. Well, we do the same thing up here. We drink everything we can New Year's Eve. It's just that New Year's Day we can't get up. <laughs> we just watch hockey. We watch hockey and football yeah, all we day. Just watch hockey. <laughs> now, our tradition here, of course, Christmas Eve is a family time. Yes. So, though you're well behaved at uh, on Christmas Eve, uh, we have an occasion on the 23rd called Tibbs Eve Tips or Eve. Tips Eve, Tipsy's Eve, whatever, yeah. where you go and get loaded drunk so you can behave yourself on. Uh, mm. Yeah. yeah. As much as we party up here, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, you will see that 98% of the people will spend that with their families, uh, yep. you know, just, but uh, after that, <laughs> yeah, the 12 the day, we, we do the 12 days of Christmas up yeah. here. And Actually, I think we do 14 some, some years. Some here, so you can early start, the weather's yeah. good, yeah. yeah. Well, for, for us, uh, again, back in Manitowoc, you know, grandma and grandpa had 10 kids and there were 27 um, of us, you know, grandkids. And so you, at one time in this small home, you could have over 75 people with spouses. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, Christmas, we would still have our old fashions or we'd still yeah. have our brandy punch and so on. But you you basically behaved up until midnight mass and yeah. then midnight mass happened and then you come back to grandma and grandpa's. And then we have all the breakfast and the blood sausage yep. and the the pickled herring and all of that. And then you can get pissed drunk. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they cut out that midnight mass here. The people were too drunk to come. <laughs> it was around the bit me used to sit with the boys in the back seat, pass around a mason jar yeah. full of rum and at, at midnight mass. <laughs> midnight mass. <laughs> See, uh, Christmas here is more like your Thanksgiving. Yes. Thanksgiving is your family. Yeah, like people don't travel here as much for Canadian Thanksgiving, which is only a yeah. month and a half away. Yeah. But uh, Christmas is the time you try to get home. Uh, our daughter lives in Hawaii. Okay. And, yeah, I saw that in your bio. Yeah, and, and we visit her one Christmas. But to me, it wasn't like Christmas. Well, considering it was eighty degrees was another thing. But it was you. You don't see the Christmas atmosphere that you see on the Thanksgiving. Okay. Up here, we it's Christmas where we see all the activity. Thanksgiving is low key. I yep. see. Okay. And it, it down there, you know, but we're not used to mowing our lawns Christmas Eve. <laughs> we can't even find our we lawns. We can't Christmas even find Eve. our lawns. 
Yeah. Well, let's see. In Gilbert, Arizona, at almost 7 a.m., it is, let's see, what's the temperature right now? It's only 84 with a high of 102, and I'm in my long sleeve jacket because at 84, I need to be in long sleeves now. My my blood has thinned so much yeah. from, this, yeah. from being in this weather. Well, we're at 13 Celsius now, so that's it's about good. 60, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anywhere between 55 and 60. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We we uh, uh, in Celsius, if it's 20, you double that and say it's 40, and head 32, it'll give you 72 Fahrenheit. But it could be, it's not right accurate. It could be 76, or it could be 72, yes. or yeah. three. but it's pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. We have our our international kids from Uzbekistan who live with us. So everything for them is Celsius. Everything for us is Fahrenheit. So when right. we look at each other's phones, I'm like, it's not 40. And she's like, yes, it is in Celsius. Yeah. Uh, we were in Hawaii in June month. And uh, me and my son-in-law went golfing at 10 after 8 in the morning. It was 84 degrees. Mm -hmm. 10, after eight. 10 after 8, it was 84 degrees. And when we finished golfing, it was 93. Way too hot for me. I, I'm not used to that type of heat. I, I'm really uncomfortable in it. Yeah, well, I always figure in August, well, in Arizona, July, August, September are the really, really hot months. Yes. But you either go on vacation somewhere else or you can drive four hours and be down in Mexico. You can drive four hours and be in San Diego on the water. Or you can drive two and a half hours and be north in Flagstaff, and just the difference in altitude, where it's 112 here, it can be 90 up there, and that's doable. So, yeah. you know, you, you don't have to stay in the valley. And then if you're working here in air conditioning anyway, and you come home and you jump in your pool. I, I saw on the news this morning that there was someone died hiking the Grand Canyon in the heat, uh, a lady. It was uh, Yes, uh, we we get probably about 10 to 12 people who pass away because of heat exhaustion because they don't bring enough water or it's literally too hot and they think that they're invincible. Right. Wow. Up here, they freeze to death in winter. Yeah. Well, they would make it up here. No, you die. No. You shatter like a china plate. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. We we go to we go to Packer games at Lambeau and you know that doesn't have a dome or anything. So again, you drink enough beer to keep yourself warm. Yeah. My my son in law was up here one winter. Now he's he's Hawaiian. He's born and raised in Hawaii. Okay. And uh, I think he was home two years before he got warm. <laughs> <laughs> he, he lived. He lived to tell yes. the story. <laughs> I know it's like I'll go home and I'll talk. I'll be there with my sister or with my mom, and I'm like, it is so cold. They're like, we're wearing shorts out here, you know, when it's when it's 20 degrees because yeah. it's finally warm. I, I I'm like, I can't do the cold anymore. <laughs> yeah, our, our first trip to Australia, we went up to the Great Barrier Reef. We did a side trip myself, and Kathy did, mm -hmm. and they were on the floating little community that's out there over the great barrier reef they apologized because the water temperature was down to 71 degrees they were giving a free wetsuits and apologizing because it was their winter and people were putting on these puffy jackets next to me and i'm peeling off my hoodie going it be on. <laughs> when when we were in hawaii I, uh, my grandson we took we took his car and i went and gassed her up and the guy was apologizing for the gas it was for something a gallon and mm -hmm. I said, you had nothing to apologize for. Where I come from, it's nine thirty-eight a gallon. So yeah. don't don't. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're so, around two dollars a liter. Yeah, well, we, we got over two dollars. Over two dollars a liter. So you four liters in a gallon. It's over. It's over. At that time, it was about nine something. Now it's gone down a bit. It's probably seven seventy yes. to eight dollars. Buck eighty or something. Yeah. this morning. So. Yeah. Now is that because? it's so difficult to get it on the island or is that canada altogether it's canada worldwide it's yeah. all over canada it says the same thing uh, now the prices in ontario is not as high as what they are in newfoundland it depends on where you live in the country there's places cheaper but in ontario i think this morning it's a buck 65 uh, yeah a gallon uh, a liter where here in Canada, i think is a buck 84 right now yeah mm. 
Mr. Okay. Rattler, and then mid-grade and spring or more yeah. again. Yeah. So. Well, this is uh, Debbie Mahoney. Good morning, Debbie. Debbie is our past president from two years ago who is joining us from home, and she'll probably jump back on uh, to make sure that she's here. She's absolutely fantastic. And another uh, cold weather person, she came down to Arizona from Alaska. So oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. So pretty much everybody in our club is not originally from Arizona. Really? Mm -hmm. We're kind of like Florida that way, where we get all the different snowbirds and everybody comes down for better weather. Gander, Gander's a lot like that too. Like, you know, they say nobody's from Gander, but a lot of people have lived there. Lived there, yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a friend here in Gander who's got a house in Arizona, and he goes down every winter. He's got arthritis, mm -hmm. and the, the heat does really good. And you know, he's it's different down there and all together than what it is up here. Yeah, absolutely. Good morning, Debbie. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Good, good morning. morning. Debbie. Mahoney is a good Newfoundland name, by the way. Yeah. Well, actually, I do have rel way distant relatives that were there, but it wasn't on the Mahoney side. That's my husband's name. Ah, what was the Newfoundland name? Uh, it was Polly, P-O-L-L-E-Y. Okay, that's not a traditional Newfoundland mm -hmm. name, no, but that, uh, sounds, Mahoney definitely is. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a Havilon. Yeah, right the there. Irish must have yeah. come across. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That could be up on the northern oh. peninsula, too. Yeah. yeah, I talk with a guy, Ron Mahoney, here at the, uh, the local high school. Yeah, a lot Ron? of Mahoney. Ron Mahoney. They're, they're moved to Ottawa, no? Ottawa. That's where two kids were, so off they went. Yeah, everybody chases their kids. Well, I don't. It took me 30 <laughs> years to get rid of mine, and I'm damned if I'm going to chase them now. <laughs> Or mine is fully left or not, but he lives three and a half hours away and he's finished university and he's an engineer. So like, yeah. Well, my son lives here in Gander, so oh, we see good. him almost on a daily basis. Yeah. Very good. good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. morning. I'm going to flip this around. Wonderful. Gentlemen, good morning. Good, good morning, morning to you. Yourself. We're going to have you tip it down a little. There you go. Now we can see. Good. Look yes, you. you can see the criminals in the back. It is, yeah, the square table. Good morning, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. We miss you at our board meetings. I miss you guys, too, and I miss the good food. You know, you can still come. I know, but I don't have help that okay. comes on until 7 a.m. So, Debbie will be streaming yes. tomorrow for the board meeting because Jim will be in Wisconsin. So, we can, I'll have you pump on. Okay. Coffee this morning, guys. <laughs> all right. Asking the questions. It's all good. It's so many of us grandparents that we've gotten used to the fact that the only time we make anybody happy is when we hand them five bucks. <laughs> yeah. Rotary meetings are the same all around the world, aren't they, gentlemen? Yeah. Matter. Yes. Yes, they are. Yes. So for most of you, like breakfast oh, meetings, like five dollars wouldn't do, do it anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah, most of them are there for breakfast, and then I run the technology for anybody who can't, uh, and then I typically don't go to the breakfast place just because uh, the city that they have the breakfast in, and then the city that the college that I work for are about two minutes away. So, so unless I have a day to go in person. Oh, okay. Bye. Now, our, our our kids, kids, we're we're going to get started. Okay. Hopefully, we have a few more people coming in here. Okay. And I'll add everybody else who's coming online. We're live streaming on YouTube right now as well. So, a lot of the people who are from the district are watching from the live stream. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, our meetings are typically. Sorry, I'm going to start the devotional now. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> what is the speaker? Uh, would you please join me in prayer? Uh, dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for this opportunity, this brand new day, uh, a chance to serve. 
uh, make us alert to the situations around us uh, every day where a little help or encouragement would be vital. Uh, give us uh, the strength to uh, do what we can. Uh, bless this food and bless us to your service. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge And if you'll join me in the four-way test, reciting it from memory, of course, but for those who may need help. First, is it the is truth? truth? Second, is it fair to the law of Third, will it feel good? Will it will and better friendships. And for Gilbert Rotary, the fifth tenant is Will it be fun? Will it be fun? Be fun. <laughs> we have not said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, most me. We get fined for the food things. And I, I have just the fines, so it's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we'll get started with our gentlemen friends in just a minute, but um, we have one visitor today, and hopefully she will be joining us this evening. We have Deborah Hickey, who is Sally, who is a potential new member. <laughs> and we'll take care of that as soon as you get back from Wisconsin. I'll have Corey's in there. So pack it. All right. Happy dollars. Is anybody happy today? I'll start it off by saying I am happy for five. Actually, I'll, I got two five dollars. Happy today. I'm happy that we have our friends from Canada joining us this morning. I'm also happy that my oldest daughter is celebrating her birthday today. I won't tell you how many years it is, but it's her birthday. And before we leave today, we'll sing. Well, I will put happy dollars and I will put in 49 happy dollars. But not to say how how old I am today. Jim? Yes. <clears throat> I'm going to put in 20. 10 is for last week because I kept raising my hand, but I uh, didn't get the recognition to give my money. And so then 10 for this week, 5 for each of our guests. Thank you, David. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else? I saw Carla sneak in here, but five dollars. Uh, I got our new bulletin this morning, and I'm so grateful that Donna does that for us every week. And Mark, you raise your hand. Off around five dollars. We got back from a from a two week trip. We spent ten days on a cruise ship, and another ten days in um, McKinley Park and Denali Park. Good experience, got a lot of good wildlife. We saw caribou, a bear came right up next to our bus, big grizzly, and uh, good time. Water sound. Okay, but we're glad to have you back. Glad to have a good time. So you stuck away from the heat for a little while. What's the temperature this morning in Gander? 13 Celsius, I think, on that one. Claude, yeah, I think up, yeah. Between 55 60 degrees here today. It's a real good sun sunburn weather. <laughs> We'll about double you today. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now we've had an unsightly warm summer. It's been like muggy hot. Our, our weather here is a very damp climate. Yeah. And it's been muggy hot the whole summer. summer. You know, salmon fishermen are not happy. The rivers are dry, critically low. Are they? Yeah. And when the water gets warm, the salmon get, they're almost like they're drunk. They just sit there in the pools. Uh, my neighbor was salmon fishing last week. He said he was literally laying the fly right over like two and three big salmon. They were just looking at it. But, mm -hmm. uh, Gander, Lake, Gander Lake is 24 miles long and four miles wide, and it's dropped five feet this summer. Is that right? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Is that a, a river fed lake or is that yeah. 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 a dam lake? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Corey, Corey, we're ready for our program to begin. Do you have? Do you want to do the introductions? You didn't want to I, order. Absolutely. Oh, I will. I'll tell them. I'll tell them. Okay. 
I will go ahead and do the introductions and then I will ask everybody to have their microphones off so that we have the ability to hear our, our speakers. And then at the end, we'll be able to turn microphones back on um, to ask questions and so on. So 21 years ago on, oh, yes, sir. I, we will we will turn off your your microphone as well. Yes, thank you. So, 21 years ago on September 11, 2001, Newfoundland shone its brightest when Gander and surrounding towns took in 7,000 passengers from airplanes, rerouted and downed at the nearest airport as the twin towers burned in New York. You may have heard some of their story on the 2017. Tony Award winner for Best Director of a Musical, Come From Away, which can currently be viewed on Apple TV. Join us today and please welcome our special guests, Claude Elliott, former mayor of Gander, and Brian Mosier, uh, re retired educator and broadcaster for Gander, uh, and members of the Gander Rotary Club as they discuss how their community came together and put service above self. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You know, uh, Claude, you want to start? You want me to start? No, I, I guess my uh, my day started as normal as any other day. Uh, I was at the coffee shop uh, when I got the message that there was a, uh, a plane that crashed in the World Trade Center in, in New York. At that time, I did not know how big a plane, how small. All we could think about was tragedy, you know, how many people's lives would be lost and that. And we sort of went back to our normal conversation. And then we heard about the second one, certainly knew that wasn't normal. And I left and went to my home and turned on my TV. And I guess I seen what everybody else in the world was seeing. And that little did I know at that time, uh, the role that Gander would play in what was happening in the United States. And uh, shortly after I got a call from the town manager saying, uh, the United States is shutting down its airspace and Canada has agreed to take all of the aircraft that's in the air. Knowing Gander's location, we're the crossroads of the world by here. Uh, once you leave Europe in the morning, and uh, once you get over halfway across the nearest airport of Gander, uh, we were told to expect 200 aircraft to land air at Gander. But the, the planes that was not halfway across was turned back. And we ended up with uh, 38 wide body aircraft, 7,000 passengers uh, from 95 countries. Uh, but the majority of our passengers were US citizens. My day started, uh, it was the first full, full week of the school year. I was a high school media teacher at Gander Collegiate, about 90 seconds down the road. And um, it taught me something that day that I've always remembered. Don't ever think you got your day figured out because you don't. Uh, my biggest two hiccups that morning when I woke up at seven o'clock was the fact that on my closed circuit system at Gander Collegiate, there was a broken audio cable that needed to be replaced. And to get to Gander Collegiate, I would cross a picket line where all my support staff, anybody non-teaching was on strike. That was my biggest hiccups that day. Yeah. When I fixed the audio cable, which took five minutes, um, it would, uh, the easiest way to test it would be to, turn, to arm the closed circuit through the building and run live cable through. That's when I saw the North Tower with smoke coming out through the window, plane hits World Trade Center. I made the stupidest joke I've ever made. I hope Buddy still gets his pilot's license because I thought it was a small aircraft clipped the window. Flipping channels, I would see uh, the uh, South Tower being hit live and realize then, like Claude, that our situation was probably going to get really different here in town. I would watch the uh, North Tower fall at lunchtime with my 11-year-old, watching eating a bowl of soup at the counter in the kitchen. And by mid-afternoon, we found out we had to turn our school, like every other public building in Gander, into a hotel which is a lot harder than you think, but we did. You know, we got the media involved by about supper time and thanks to everybody at the town getting things done. Remember, we were a town of 9,300 people-ish. We took in 7,000 people, you know. Our town doubled between lunch and supper with very little warning. Uh, I thought looking after the passengers that night and uh, everything else would be the toughest thing I'd have to do. And by the next morning, I would go home and go to bed. 
with 27 hours without sleep, I found out on Wednesday morning at nine o'clock that I was on the air at 10. I agreed to go in and do one show and got home four days later. I got home Saturday night. I got up Tuesday morning. I had duties at school at night. I had duties. I would do 11 live shows in a changing fluid situation in Gander. A lot of them with live guests. As a matter of fact, my first guest came in so quickly that he was a Salvation Army officer. Uh, he was not a local. I didn't notice till in the 30 second countdown. I looked at him, realized I didn't know him. And one of our technicians passed me who he was on a post-it note. We started from there. Uh, four days, 11 shows, an hour, hour and a half in duration. Because the magic things in your pocket that you now have that tells you everything, 2001, they didn't exist. No. Radio, newspaper, uh, and television were key. Yeah. And by the way, if you've seen Come From Away, there was a Janice. Janice was their newspaper reporter who transferred in literally the day before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's baptism by fire for both yeah. of us. Yeah. You know, you can get really busy and... In Gander, you largely have one of everything. You have one mayor, you have one TV broadcaster, you have one newspaper reporter, you have two two policemen besides the RCMP, the National Police Force. But in the town, Municipal Police Force had two policemen. Yeah. You know, uh, and you have ninety. We say ninety three hundred people. Uh, a lot of people had day jobs. A lot of people were too young or too old. So whittle down your core. But uh, a class act transpired over the next five days, which we didn't really know was going to be five days. No, you were you were going hour by hour because we were told that the airplanes would, was only going to be on the ground long enough for the U.S. to figure out how widespread this terrorist attack was, and we were we had the emergency room set up. And as the mayor, I declared a state of emergency uh, because we wanted to prepare for the worst case scenario. Uh, we wanted to prepare to make sure if those people were coming off the plane, we wanted to be prepared. So it was better to be over prepared than under prepared. And the length of time that the people stayed on the plane gave us the opportunity to get ready. And that we, the state of emergency was declared basically to take the hotels. We only got 500 hotel rooms here in Gander and we had 7,000 people at the airport. So we, we had to come up with some makeshift hotels and, and, and to get the people in. And so when we, we got all that done and got everything in place, then when we heard that they were coming off the plane, then we were ready. We knew where everybody was going. We knew what flights was going where. And, and so the time that they were on the tarmac gave us the time to get prepared. Keep in mind, the last people, the last plane to the plane, they were sitting on the tarmac for 28 hours. That was Nick and Diane's plane. Wasn't yeah, it? it was. Yeah. yeah. So if you've seen the Nick and Diane story, yeah. they were on the tarmac. They didn't know about each other at that point in time. So they were sitting in different parts of the aircraft. Yeah. By the way, yesterday was their 20th anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's a situation that you can't imagine yourself being in. Uh, and you can't imagine because... You know, at, now that it, it was 20 years ago, looking back at it and seeing the notice that it's after getting, uh, a lot of people really did pay a lot of attention to what was happening. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, if you want a, want a true example of Newfoundland hospitality, just hang around for those five days. Yeah. I bet you the average weight gain is about five pounds per person. Yeah. Well, one of the things that, uh, you know, it, that I said as from the beginning and still 21 years later, the first day we had 7,000 strangers at the airport. The third day we had 7,000 friends. And on the fifth day when they all left, we lost 7,000 family members. That's how close we became to those people. And we have people in Gander that's traveled throughout the United States visiting the people that they had in their home. They've had, they've visited Gander to the people there that as, but we've had a lot of Americans up here in the last 20 years that just heard about it, wanted to come up and meet the people. Uh, we've had a lot of that or, and well, since COVID uh, people weren't traveling, but this year oh, yeah. uh, it's been crazy. Like 
I do uh, speak to bus tours every Friday night. And so far since June, I've done 25 bus tours. That's just me. And, uh, you know, people are traveling around and it, it, they want to hear the story. Because I think when you look at our society as a whole, I don't think there was ever a time in our history that people are looking for a good news story than what it is today, because our whole world really is in turmoil. Uh, you know, you just watch the news and you can see it happening all over the world. So this good news story of Come From Away is resonating with people. And it was nothing for us. It was just part of our everyday life. And we didn't see nothing special about what we did. You know, it was just that we, uh, I think over the five days, we coordinated 285,000 meals. You know, that was nothing. I mean, that was a lot of volunteers, everybody in the community. And, you know, the Salvation Army played a major role. The Red Cross played a major role. And But the citizens and, you know, the job that the citizens done uh, was as important as the one that I done. And today we have everlasting friends from it. We put out a, a scrolling announcement around supper time that first day at cable. I was standing in the lobby actually of Gander Collegiate and we needed a few things. We didn't know how to get the message out again, Twitter and Facebook Live and all that. That was not a part of our world at that time. Even emailing was kind of rough and, and, yeah, and rocky. Very so I called my producer and he actually went into the station and the two radio stations here, they were both already there. And we set up a, a chain basically of what we needed you know, and we put, we had no programming on that night. So we just put up the scrolling announcements, you know, take a turkey supper, hockey schedule, a municipal election, which by the way was going on at yeah, the time. time. Yeah. Municipal <laughs> election, the advance polls that Saturday. <laughs> Don't complicate things anymore. Uh, yeah. It was a busy time, but the level of response within 40, 45 minutes, there was cars coming into all the venues. Like people took mattresses off their beds. They got it out their campers. They brought in sleeping bags. Yeah. Nobody wanted anything back. back. The dentist's office came up with cases of toothbrushes. Mm -hmm. uh, people were thinking of things we didn't think of, like cases of granola bars. So we didn't know how long they were going to be there. We just looked for a spot for them to sleep. Uh, sleeves of, of water fans because it was unseasonably warm that week yeah, for, uh, thank god it was but yeah. it was really warm that week as a matter of fact yeah, divine intervention or whatever but when i gave the announcement that faa and transport canada had opened the airspace the clouds opened along with it and that saturday it wasn't even dropouts it was sheets of rain coming out yeah but the funny thing about it is when they were ready to go back a lot of people didn't want to leave yeah <laughs> <laughs> they said we want to stay here and uh, you know especially the u.s citizens we found that they didn't know what type of country they were going to go back to they were scared uh, you know when they seen what had happened they didn't know if they were going to be safe anymore so we had to reassure them that yeah you know i mean united states is a big country and you will recover from it you know the resilience you will but yeah if we could keep you here we knew you'd be safe here but we know that you had to go back home even getting on a plane Plain. was kind of scary was scary for, for a lot yeah. of them like yeah. and keep in mind all the grocery stores, supermarkets, Walmart, every store stayed open 24 hours yeah. around the clock. And the plane people could go in and pick up what they want. And there was no charge. Yeah. Everything was given to them free. I lived between two grocery managers. Yeah. They they just stayed at work that day. And like yeah. the next morning, it's things you don't, you don't see everything that's going on around you in, in a school. And the, the whole cable thing hadn't kicked in then at that point in time. But uh, I looked in the cafeteria. It was fully stocked for a hot, cold medium hot cold breakfast i'm not talking here's a juice box and a and a thing of yogurt go eat it i'm talking egg bread bacon, bacon ham bacon, sausage everything. toast you name it i mean this was gourmet breakfast well there's two things newfoundlanders like to do is eat and drink yes so <laughs> we'll never run out of booze and we'll never run out of food the average newfoundlander <laughs> always assumes you're starving to death Start and we're going to be your savior so like yeah, here it is we're, we're going to give it to you but you know and there was also some down moments uh, yeah. at one point we discovered there was 95 children on those planes on the way to disney world uh, through the children's wish foundation and that was very, uh, took a lot of toll on the community. But a group of volunteers took them and entertained them for five days. Took them on Gander Lake canoe, uh, canoeing, took them on horseback riding, took them out to parks, got musicians in, put on concerts for them, and all the mascots we could get in town and put it on for it. So it was, uh, 
Hey, you know, and, and they were so excited. And one little girl said when she was leaving, she said, I believe this was better than Disney World. Yeah, Disney rained all week. It rained all week. It it got so so <laughs> there was a lot of needs uh, thing. And one of the things that we tried to do was take their minds off of what was happening back home and put on all those parties and get togethers and that so they could have a good time in the midst of a tragedy. But you can imagine what you're going through just yourself. If you're in a foreign land where, I mean, we had people didn't even know where Canada was, yeah. much less than knowing where Gander was. And you can imagine what they were going to and everything and trying to keep their minds out, keep them occupied. Because the last thing they needed was to sit in front of that television and see that same story over and over and over. So we, uh, we took care of all their needs. As so Brian like, yeah. was saying, we, we went on television they went, and we asked people to bring in toilet paper. Oh, my God. And they filled the At, classroom at Gander Academy yeah. with it. After 45 minutes, we had to tell people not how to bring in toilet paper. We had way too much. At the next show, like yeah. I had to read it and announce that please stop bringing toilet paper to Gander Academy. <laughs> you know, like right after the municipal election, advance polls this Saturday. Oh, and also stop bringing toilet yeah. paper to Gander Academy. Yeah. A classroom full. Yeah. Not in cases. It's four rolls at a time. Not two not rolls at a time. time. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. yeah. You know. Like I said, it was a community effort. And I always say the greatest asset that any community got is its people. Yeah. And uh, if you got your people, there's there's nothing that you can't do. <laughs> a friend of mine who was actually a former student, uh, she's now one of CBC Canada's top national reporters. <clears throat> she went on national TV a few years ago, actually, when she covered us in London. And she said she remembers that day when she was in grade 10 making muffins. Her and her mom made a big batch of muffins and on the fourth location, they found a spot that needed muffins. The first three were going to look, we're up to our neck in muffins. And they finally found a place. Like, you're talking buffet tables, man, round the clock. Please eat this one because we got two more dishes coming in. We got no room to put them. Yeah. Hot dishes. I know. Uh, I, I was doing an interview one night with a, a, a host uh, in Detroit. And uh, he said to me, he said, Mr. Mayor, I understand you gave complete strangers your vehicles to drive. Yes, I said we did. If you know, we would give our vehicles to people, let them drive around the community or just go sightseeing. Wow, we said we wouldn't do that in Detroit. <laughs> I said, No, but we don't live in Detroit. Yeah. Well, he said, Weren't you scared they were going to steal your vehicles? I said, Not really. We live on a highway. <laughs> you know, it's not, not easy to get off of there with a stolen car. <laughs> I mean, people would take blank strangers into their there houses. Was numerous episodes of this, yeah. but then go back to work. Go back to work and leave them there. Leave them there. Yeah, let them sleep and get a shower. Eat. Car keys hung up in the porch. Take the keys, take the car, go for a ride. Probably the wallet left in on the dresser. Yeah. What else? But you know, in saying all this generosity, at the beginning, people were, the, the passengers were a little bit skeptical. Yeah. They're saying, this can't be real. Uh, they're telling us to sleep and go to sleep in their home. And when we go to sleep, they're going to swipe our wallets. <laughs> you know, they're going to steal them. They're going to. And it took them a while to gain our trust because people said, we've never seen this kind of generosity ever in our lives. And we weren't sure how to take it. I, but, I know of a Lufthansa pilot that flew back to Frankfurt on Saturday wearing the top half of his flight suit and Walmart sweatpants pants. because the pants that he wore in here on Tuesday wouldn't do yeah, up no. on Saturday. No, <laughs> He was also the same guy that faxed me from Bombay International Airport two weeks later going, I can't get it out of my mind, but what's that white fish and cheesy creamy stuff I ate so much of? Yeah. Please send, uh, yeah. if you can send it now. So I'm photocopying my, it was a gas station giveaway, Ultramar Recipes of Atlantic Canada, Cotta Gratin recipe, which is basically fish and cheese in like a roux. Uh, I, I photocopy that and fax it to Bombay Airport. And I get this thank you. Uh, as far as I know, it still exists in Frankfurt. <laughs> But, you know, there was a lot of casseroles yeah. went through a lot of ovens that week and a lot of people because we're not content here in Newfoundland unless you feed unless we feed you as much as we can possibly feed you. It's part of our hospitality, mm. you know. Yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, I, I think for us, too, I mean, I've been asked the question many times, what did you learn from it? And uh, I think. You know, listening to the people looking at around the world, I think we need to be thankful for where we're living. I mean, uh, I still go to bed. I don't lock my doors. There's nights I don't take keys out of my car. I mean, that's just part of the life. Yeah. And, and a lot of places around the world, you can't do that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so, but 
I don't think we should ever take it for granted because a lot of things are starting to creep in our country and our communities that's happening all over the world. I mean, we just went through a tragedy in, in the country there the week where two young folks stabbed and killed 10 people and wounded, you know, 10 more. And, and, and I mean, so nobody is exempt from it. And uh, we had to be a bit more cautious, but I still feel fairly safe here in this community. You know, you go out on your back step at night here and you just, lots of times you can just hear the silence. And we, I live right in the center of town, as do you. Yeah. And it's, it's quiet here and you can look up at the stars and the air smells so beautifully clean here, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you want it even cleaner, just go out next to the ocean, which next is to the ocean. never more than a half hour, 40 minutes away from it's wherever there. you are. And well, out in your home in Twillingate, yeah, was, you know, yeah. you stand on Twillingate lookout and just breathe the air up the Fresh ocean. Air. It's the cleanest you'll ever breathe. Probably while you're looking at yeah. humpback whales yeah. in the bay. Yeah. Well, one of the things we've always lived by, like if I had a group of people coming to my house for dinner and my neighbor was gone and I needed his barbecue, I'd just go over to his place, take it and bring it over to mine and use it. He would take mine. I mean, we do that all the time. This We don't ask. We just go and take and because we know we're going to bring it back and i know they're going to bring back mine so it's, it's a great way of life up here it's very low key well the four of us were at a dinner theater in twillingate <clears throat> two or three years ago right before COVID, and there was two extra seats at the table so just some two random strangers sat down with us and through the jigs and the reels they didn't know who we were first when they sat down they quickly got excited after but she said i've i've been to newfoundland the one thing that one thing i really wanted to try was fish cakes and i've had them they haven't been very good of course bucko here pipes up when are you back in gander you'll have fish cakes so you made a bunch of stuff we brought down a bunch of stuff and like the look on their face when they saw the food that was on the table for two strangers that we met for a couple of hours a week ago yeah and we literally bloated them with yeah. food and they enjoyed the fish cakes and yeah. the pan fried cod and the salmon and the dessert and the vegetables and like uh, cod tongues yeah you had some cod tongues there too oh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of fish fish eat in Newfoundland. That's uh, our main dish, and there's a lot of it in different ways cooked, you know. So, yeah, we live on, on a lot of fish. And if you've never tried fish straight out of the ocean, ocean you need to come to Newfoundland in the summer and get it. You will have fresh fish, cod. cod. We, we, yeah, we call it fish cod. cod. Right. Everything else we call by its name, but yeah. fish is cod. Yeah. Caught that morning. I had fish for supper two weeks ago that you brought in from twilling gates mm -hmm. it was caught two hours previously mm -hmm. the only time was the cleaning time and the drive back to gander which is about an hour hour and yeah. a bit yeah. and it was in the pan that night you can't even hold it together in the pan it's just falling apart while you're pan frying it and it's sweet mm -hmm. newfoundland lobster newfoundland crab like where our water is a little colder a little deeper you get that layer of fat around the shell of a shellfish and you get a sweetness about it delicious yeah and you know so I, I guess looking at, you know, 20, 21 years later, uh, you know, that uh, when you look back, it, it's hard to believe that you did what you did as a community. Uh, every municipality in the world has a disaster plan. And, and the town of Gander is no different. Our di disaster plan revolved around plane crashes. We're a airport town. I mean, we've had several airplane crashes here. In 1985, we had the Hero here where 248 American soldiers uh, were killed and crew here just outside of Gander. Just from takeoff. Just from takeoff. And, you know, so uh, we, we, have, we have all this here and we sometimes, I don't think appreciate what we got. And I think, unfortunately, it took 9-11 for us to this, to come to grips that we should never take for granted what we have. Yep. And, and as I said before, and I think that's what we learned from that, uh, from the lesson. The people that was there said that on, when they landed in Gander and heard what had happened, they had lost all faith in mankind. But a lot of them said, after five days here, you've restored my faith in mankind. So I think we saw the worst of mankind and we also saw the best of it. So, you know, uh, and perhaps it was meant to be that way, to show that 
even though in the midst of tragedy, there's still a lot of good people left in the world. And we don't consider ourselves nothing extra special. We do what we're supposed to do. I mean, the Bible tells us, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter anything. You could be your friend. You could be your family or a complete stranger. But you're supposed to help people in time of need. And that's all we do here. And, you know, for me, uh, we had 95 countries. And, I mean, we were around surrounding. Uh, I mean, in my case, I, didn't, I don't think I had any sleep for five days. No, yeah. 95 countries for you you as well. I mean, yeah. it, everywhere I was, you were. Yeah. And, uh, but they all got along. Yeah. You know, uh, 95 countries was a better than average chance that maybe there was a difference in belief or opinion or whatever else. But you know what? There was nothing major. No. We all pulled in the one direction. There were no ma no incidents. There were no whatever. A lot of them were staying under the same roofs. Yeah. Maybe we didn't believe the same things. But listen, we got a situation. There's 7,000 of you. There was only 9,300 on, you know, so now there's 16,000 of you. Uh, but we all got along. We had no major incidents. No. We all pulled into one direction. We all sought to resolve, and late that Saturday, when th they were all leaving, uh, most of us were ready for a good nap here. But uh, you look back, and it was only a couple of years ago. Someone asked me about the crime rate. It was like in Gander with 7,000 extra people. I said, no different than it was with 9,300. No. There were no major incidents. But, hey, the, you know, there were a lot of people from a lot of different countries who you know, people uh, people were going into the stores and they were giving everything free. They weren't giving it because they couldn't afford to buy it. You got to realize we had ninety five countries. You imagine going into a, into a Walmart with uh, you know a lot of students working there and all the different currencies and trying to do an exchange. It would be a complete nightmare. Yeah. So the business said, "Look, just give it to them. We don't charge anything. So whatever they wanted." Now people wanted to pay us and we said we don't need any money when we saw the smiles on your faces and the tears of joy we were paid in full yeah. we didn't need anything else but there was a suggestion box at the town hall and a lot of people put money in there when it was over we took out all the money that from all over the world and we took it to the bank of nova scotia and they decided that they would do the transform they would look at the currency and do it all and when they was all transformed into Canadian dollars, there was $6,000 during Canadian dollars in that one box. But then again, at the venues that hosted people, literally daily for weeks and after, there'd be gifts, European mm -hmm. chocolates, Money. orchids, Every roses, yes. new desk chairs for everybody, yes. new shirts for everybody, new coats for everybody. Yeah. We would, I know again at Collegiate, on Friday, we would literally like draw names to see who got to take what home. Mm -hmm out of everything that had arrived that week for weeks after yeah and there was a out in lewisport there was a lady stayed there for columbus ohio by the name of shirley brooks jones yeah. and she wanted to start a scholarship and when she left on the plane she asked the captain if she could talk to the people and he said yes and she's going to, i'm going to come around and take up a collection and if you haven't got any money, I will give you my card. You can send it some. And I think Delta Airlines uh, agreed to match it. Now, I don't know what she collected or anything. But I do know in the last 20 years that there's been six to eight kids have left that school with a scholarship to go off to post-secondary education. And today, that scholarship is worth $1.5 million today. That was just one plane. And this week, the, we just saw an interview with the young girl in Lewisport. The very first one yeah. to ever get the scholarship is now a doctor. In Botwood. In Botwood. She's back in. She stayed in central Newfoundland to practice. Yeah. Right so, Kirby. yeah. So, you know, yeah, we've received thousands and thousands through organizations and everything. And like even at Gander Collegiate and, and other places, the donations that came in anonymously. Yeah. And I'm not talking fifty dollars. No, I'm talking a lot, a lot, of, a lot of money. Yeah. Thousands of dollars anonymously. Yeah, we don't know who, who donated it. Like our scholarship fund again or collegiate yeah. went yeah, way up. Way up. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Uh 
and I mean, we didn't we didn't have time to realize it, but there was a lot of very affluent, rich people in Gander. Like there was a billionaire oil sheik here who wanted to buy the Hilton. Well, we don't have a Hilton, and he couldn't buy it anyway because we needed it. Yeah. But like you know, to keep him happy, we had uh, we gave him a, the nursery school classroom all to himself at Fraser Road United Church. Church. Yeah. Uh, we had one of the top executives of Hugo Boss in the Gander Collegiate, and we didn't know anything until we all got closed two weeks later. You know, what our sizes on. We had one of the top executive chefs in the world here at Gander Collegiate, Vic Jim Garb. You had supper with I him. I had dinner with him in Hawaii. Yeah. That's where he's living now. And uh, yeah, he, he wasn't allowed in the cafeteria for the first couple of days because he was a guest and you, you don't need to cook until we <laughs> found out who he was. And on, I think the last day he pitched in with the cook and then we sort of took turns beating each other in the head for not letting him cook before that because it wasn't even food. It was sure. art, art <laughs> that you could eat. And we had the mayor of Frankfurt, Germany, yeah. Petra Roth, Petra Roth. Was staying there. She was at Gander Collegiate. At Gander Collegiate. And she would come in my office every morning, 4 a.m. Because 4 a.m. in Gander is breakfast time in Germany. Yeah. And she would come in and talk to her staff and make phone calls and that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it was, uh, uh, it, it's, it's sad one way that this story of Come From Away was created because of a tragedy. And that tragedy never occurred. Come from away would never have been been here. And as much as we enjoy doing what we're doing, as much fun people are having with this show and enjoying it, we can't forget the lives that was lost. Yeah. We can't forget the victims and the, the families that's left behind that lost the loved ones. And I think that that's very important that we maintain that and never forget how come this musical was made. Our first trip to New York, we were taken, I think, sort of on a private don't hold back any details tour of Ground Zero yeah. and the World Trade Center and met a lot of the people who were affected firsthand yeah. by it. Uh, it's then that you get the gut punch of just exactly yeah. how big this thing was. Yeah. And when you go to the basement of the World Trade Center and they show you the twisted rivets because they've left the basement yeah. kind of intact and like there's a fire truck there, she's twisted like a licorice stick. Yeah. Uh, and well, I guess they couldn't get it out. They built the new Freedom Tower around, around it. Yeah. Uh, you realize the magnitude. There's one room in particular you go in and you can hear all the first responders. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got part way through it and had to leave. Yeah. It, it's just yeah. too much for the brain to handle. Yeah. You know, you're on, you're on the ground front hand, but you didn't know the true impact. I mean, you talk to firefighters big football player sized firefighters who when they hear who you are break into tears and just want to hug you you know uh it's it it, it touches the heart and i've yet to see come from away without having at least one cry and yeah. usually it's three or four just saw it in australia and i can tell you uh the tear ducts were dry yeah, when I, finished. I i've seen this i've seen the show 88 times i've seen it 60. and uh, i mean i still get emotional now when i see it because i think it brings you back to that day that what happened in in the united states well you're hearing your words firsthand yeah. as yeah. you said them yeah you know to make sound like yeah. it was you saying them and it takes you back i mean i i, I guess there's a little bit of you know that that mm. you know trauma from what you went through because mm. it was testing mentally and physically and and you had to because yeah. if you it's like my producer said to me if you don't i don't have plan b no that's right don't lean on a wall because i know i'll lose you so you kept going. You drink lots of coffee and you put on giveaway shirts from the back room to get on a show because the one you got on really stinks right now. And I think you throw the one you got on in the garbage. Festival of Flight 1998. I'm wearing it in 2001 on live TV. Well, most of us, I know myself, you're just going on pure adrenaline. Yeah. I mean, you've got 7,000 people and uh, they're not all sleeping the one time i mean you're lying on a floor or you're lying on a cot it's not like home and and everything going through your mind so we had we had to be alert for 24 hours to make sure if they needed something 2 a.m in the morning they were giving it 2 a.m in the yeah. morning they wanted something 11 o'clock at night was the same thing so you know we uh, we had to be alert so we were going on pure adrenaline prescriptions from going. 95 countries were interpreted you weren't getting your luggage forget that that's no not happening no. you could have whatever in your luggage you weren't getting it uh so prescriptions from 95 countries were interpreted by making a lot of phone calls and using the resources that you have so that people could have their medications and do a cross match yeah because uh, medication is different in every country the dosage 
So what might be a dose, if you add Demerol 500 milligrams, well, in, in Nigeria, that might be 900 or it could be 300. So the doctors had to do all, and there was nothing in the Google. There was no Google back no then. Google. And they had to do all the calculations, make phone calls all over the world to make sure they had, that they didn't get the person too much or not enough. Because some of it was life-saving. Life you, know, you, right? you needed heart yeah. problems and, mm -hmm. and whatever else, but you weren't getting your luggage. Forget that. And we never had one case of food poisoning. Not we're, we're, that's one. one thing that we're proud of. <laughs> we had a scattered person that had to go on a diet, diet when, they, when they got home, but we had no food poisoning. Clothes that didn't fit, uh, but listen, we looked after you, you know? Yeah, we and, did. and it's really, it, it makes you feel good that yeah. we did that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that was the payment. That was the payment that we wanted, that you were, you en enjoy yourself during a difficult situation. And that you went away with a different outlook on life than what you had when you landed there. And I think that's what's important. And, you know, uh, it's not my story or it's not Brian's yeah. story, because if I die tonight, this story is still going to be told. Yeah. You know, and so, yeah, we were the, we're the characters. We were there at the play. But this story can be told without us being here. So hopefully that, you know, that. It'll continue to be told throughout the world, and hopefully, somewhere down the road, we can be all come better people or do a bit of kindness to people. You know, don't cost nothing. Say hello to a person. Yeah, happiness and kindness is free. It really yeah. is. Yeah. But like like I said in an interview last September, actually, because it's twentieth last September, and I said, you know, we're somewhere now between current affairs and modern history because the oldest kid in school right now wouldn't be born for two more years. So it's you gauge how you're speaking to people a little differently because yeah. they weren't around when this happened. Yeah. Like my son is 32 now. He was 11 when this happened. OK, he remembers it. But the oldest kid in school right now, the kid that's in their senior year this year, wouldn't be born for two more years. Mm -hmm. So right on that transition point now between current affairs, which you could talk about as current affairs and modern history, which really hasn't found itself into the history books yet, you know, but it has, you know, it's, it's, it's right there. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you until the documentary you are here was made in 2017, I didn't even have copies of my footage. No. It's the only existing media footage of the events because no reporters could get in here and NTV didn't have a reporter in central and CBC was doing a supper hour newscast. We blanketed everything. It fills DVDs. It happened. The tapes were still there. And I was able to digitize it and put them on DVDs. And I have, have them in two different locations now. I uh, Since 9-11, I've done a lot of traveling throughout the United States. I've been to Boston. I've been to Philadelphia. I've been to New York. I've been to Oklahoma. I've been to Detroit. I, I've been to Hawaii. Well, our daughter lives there. And while I was there, I had the pleasure of going to all the schools and telling the kids this story. Because I think if we're going to change the world, we have to get to the kids in school and let them know. And I mean, it's only amazing. You now the kids in the lower classes, you know, they were they were very interested in it. But as you moved up, it was like the questions, and they were just overwhelmed by it. And they wanted to hear the story, so it's important that we get it to the youth and yeah. you know, the doc. But even to any group at all, I mean, you know. It's all about kindness and generosity. We've uh, I've been zoomed into classes in England. Uh, they yeah. do, they've written units on Comfortable Way, yeah. and, and they'll have a couple of us speak to them. I think I speak to them pretty much every year. Yeah, and uh, the questions and the things you want to hear. I just got back from Australia like a month ago, and I did a question and answer uh, opening night on the Gold Coast, and the questions and just a level of interest that's still there and wanting to know wanting to find out more you know this story is around for a long long time probably forever well we're headed to new york now for closing and we're leaving here the 30th september 30, yeah. and we're going up for the closing but a lot of the shows that i've been had a lot of people would come up to me after and would say how much of that is true of if people still say, did you actually do that? Yes. Everything in that musical is true. Now, the wording may be changed, not but a lot. it is not a lot, but a few, but it's, uh, it's absolutely true, you know, and we hear that all the time. So probably it's time for you people to ask us some questions now. Yes. We can talk all day. So. Yes. And all night. All yeah. night. So why don't you ask some questions? 
if if those are are uh, still on, if you want to undo your microphones, uh, those who are at the Nook, uh, Jim, you will have to turn your microphone on uh, yourself. I won't be able to do that from here, but I'm going to go ahead and change the layout for those who are streaming to a tiled layout. Can you hear me? We can. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me bring this out. Kurt had a question, but let me bring the, mic, the speaker out a little bit. First of all, thank you so much for what you did. And thank you so much for being here today and telling us about it. Mm -hmm. I, I have questions that you, you wouldn't have been aware at the time, but you may be aware now. How did your air traffic controllers uh, extend their duties and the ground crews to get all of these planes ready to put back in the air? And how did you possibly have enough jet fuel to build those planes so they could uh, get back in the sky? Well, the air traffic control center here in Gander, there's over 200 air traffic controllers, and they look after all the airplanes over the ocean. So, and Gander has two large runways, one 11,000 feet, another one 10,000, and we've got a huge, there was no problem in parking planes, and we took a lot more. As for going back out, when they were ready to go back out, it was one plane at a time. So when we got a call that Delta Flight 15 was leaving, that people were picked up, taken to the airport, and when they got processed, and when they got aboard the plane, then they, were, they got a call saying American Airlines Flight 28 is going out, then we would bring that. So one plane at a time. Lots of fuel. We had three companies with refueling. We had Echo, Ultramar, and Irving at the airport at the time. Plus, we have big storage tanks out in Lewisburg where the tankers comes in and fills up the jet fuel. So there was lots of fuel, and the easy part was one flight at a time. When that one left, that's when the next came back. Just to give you an idea of the timeline, the next big fastest plane was six hours yeah. in process. Yeah. They would put yeah. mirrors yeah. on. They did put every pair of object was taken out. Every, every bit of glassware, forks, knives, spoons. Everything was taken out. Nothing sharp get on and go yeah uh and it was scrutinized with like you know please uh so it took i think bev said so two hours later, and yeah processing i mean gas up no problem but like just going through the plane never died the whole day and a lot of air traffic controllers by the way came in on their day off yeah when they heard yeah yeah as did the ground handlers. Yes. Okay. I have a question. Where, yes. where did the idea of the yeah. musical come from? <laughs> On the 10th anniversary, these two young people showed up. We had the big ceremony here in town. Um, and at it, there were these two young people right out of college. Uh, they're going to write the great American play about 9 11 and gander uh, don't tell them but we may or may not have laughed at them but we, but we gave them their time uh, little did we know they would become two of our closest friends matter of fact we'll be here in a couple of days and we can't wait to see them. david hine and his new wife irene uh and uh so we all gave them time i met them at the cable station we started going through the old footage and tapes and they're recording everything you met them Town hall. Oh yeah, eighteen and, hours. I yeah, I, I, I was with them between four and six hours uh, one day. And, okay, you'll never see them again. That's fine because a lot of people were going to write the great story by their book. You know, some but cat to something. But yeah, where them two people ever going? By the way, the word starts coming through. This is actually a play. This is a musical. Mm -hmm. This is doing really well. As a matter of fact, Janice was the first one to see it. She thought it was in college in Ontario, and she phoned me. She did two things. One, you and I are the same character. And two, it's really good. And I said, do you ever think we'll see this? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, little did I eat my words. I saw it for the first time in Seattle. They flew me down to Seattle for the whole thing there. And you know, if I, I'm not, I always say I never enjoyed 
the first time because you don't know what's coming. You don't know if it's going to be portrayed the way they deliver or is it going to be right the opposite. But after watching it, I realized that they nailed it. You know, it was right on. And after that, uh, never in our wildest dreams did we ever believe that 21 years later we'd be talking about a, a musical what happened again. Or the places we've gone to, you know, places we talk to people at. I mean, you can't dream this stuff. No. Are there other questions? You didn't really cancel the hockey the whole five days, did you? Yes, we did. Well, where else are you put the, the, the food that you need yeah. storage? Yeah, you. we cancel hockey, and I tell you, that's a, that's a dangerous thing up here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it's, if you're taking a life in your own hands by canceling that. But a hockey rink makes a great fridge. True Maybe. story. Well, that's what we wanted the ice surface. We put all the food on the ice surface to keep it cool. So we turned the stadium into a, a refrigerator. Good thinking. Keeps it cold. That's right. I mean, you, you go up here for your hockey surface, but on top of this, there's like pallets of yogurt, yogurt. pallets of milk, no. pallets of fruit, you know, like yeah. it's... Pork <laughs> going right out on the ice, dropping the pallets down. It stayed cold. We had seven thousand extra people to feed. That's right. I remember the first Did time. You have enough beer for everybody? Say Did again? you have enough beer for everybody? Oh yes. God, yes. You're never going to run out of that. Never going to run out that up here. No. And and right. I don't need to tell you, sales did really well, well that week. Yeah. 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 The corner yeah. stores were loving it. Yeah. And see, it was warm, it so was it was nice. So you could sit outside. I remember one guy from Germany. He was on a park bench outside one school. He was standing. He'd wander up to Powell's convenience store in the morning, come back with his case of beer, park it between his ankles, and just look at the sky and look at the cars and drink his case of beer. Probably in the afternoon, he'd go back and get another one. We had a couple of passengers that decided to walk to Walmart, and he said they didn't go very far. So someone stopped and asked if they wanted to ride. And he said, you know, he said, I was always told by my mother to never get in a car with strangers. And he said, no, we're going to walk. And he said, when the third car stopped, he said to his friend, he said, we might as well get in the car because if we don't, we'll never get to Walmart. <laughs> you know, and that's the way it is up here. One of my favorite bits of footage that I did after I had the camera up one day, and there was a guy there, uh, he was from somewhere in the Middle East, but he had gotten his first pair of socks underwear. And it was the ugliest old cheapy Walmart underwear, and he's holding it up like a kid on Christmas morning going, yay! Because yeah. he's got new, clean underwear. <laughs> it was a long time for you to buy underwear in Gander after that, because we, we got we, it in the store. Actually, they ran out of everything. Yeah. 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 And also, like, you know, the grocery trucks were set. They were probably going to the Avalon Peninsula or wherever else. But we needed them here. And the yeah. grocery stores diverted them to Gander. To Gander with food. Yeah. Because there's a lot of food kind of needed. Not counting what people took out of their houses, which was, like, incredible. Casserole dishes, you know, in your arms like a forklift. Just bringing them in, laying them to the table. I'll be back again later. It's a... Uh, Good. We love feeding you. I have a question as well. In the show, and, and I think it's the toilet paper story, they talk about, you know, the Lions Club, you know, is this, you know, bringing the toilet paper. Uh, and I've watched the Tom Brokaw shows, you know, Operation Yellow Ribbon. Right. And of course, the sign for Gil, uh, for Gander shows that there's a Kiwanis and there's lions and there's rotary and so on. Was there anything specific that the Rotary Clubs were doing, or were they just kind of in that group effort with everybody else? I think they. Uh, at, we don't have a Rotary building or any such thing in Gander. We have our meetings at the local hotel every Tuesday. But every Rotarian was probably volunteering through their church, through the, up to the schools. Uh, I would venture to say that all 40 something Rotarians we have here was volunteering for them five days through other yeah. venues like their church. A lot of people went to their churches and volunteered. Yeah. Churches were very active. Yeah. Churches and schools, especially. Yeah. 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 And a lot of Rotarians were teachers and retired yeah. teachers and they to their schools that helped them. Yeah. So my other question is, you talk about 95 different countries, which means 
a whole lot of languages. Yep. How did you navigate being able to show directions or explain how we're going to breakfast here or now you need to get on your plane when when you have all these different languages going on? Well, one of the things was, uh, you got to remember, a lot of the passengers could speak multiple languages, so they could help with translation. Also, we have a lot of teachers here that speak multiple languages, and we also have a lot of foreign doctors that was here in, in Canada at the time, and they could speak different languages. I tell people the only language they couldn't understand was us. <laughs> I think it, it was a joint effort by the passengers, and teachers and doctors that help with the translation. Yeah, and it, the, I really don't think there were any major, no. there, were, there were no language barriers. No barriers, no. Like that Thursday afternoon we decided, and it was blistering hot outside, we threw the cables of the camera, nothing wireless, we threw the camera cables out into Airport Boulevard, station right on Airport Boulevard, across the parking lot. I went out literally four hours and talked to the world. And everybody that came along, we could have a conversation with, you know, they could understand a lot of them, they would understand the question, but would uh, answer in their native language and so on. Uh, I knew I was getting tired when I, think I spoke to a couple in Spanish and I don't speak Spanish. Yeah. And my producer came up and said, you doing okay? And I had the coffee cup in my hand, but phone ring, my belt and shirt tail hanging. Out. And, uh, but, you know, and we were only going to air a couple of them. But we ended up airing all of them because it was it, it, it would warm your heart just what people were saying now everybody wanted to get home you know but the level of thanks that you got and like people would hug you after the interview you know it, it was it was absolutely heartwarming and uh you are here in the documentary if you get a chance to see it i think that's on apple plus now as well um it's they, they show clips of some of those interviews and so on and if you look real close, there's a little kid there in the sand. They shirt, uh, uh, a hockey cap, baseball cap. My son, he was 11, and he, he was in French immersion at the time. So he was out there. Like, take one for the team and do, do what you got to do. I think I paid him off at McDonald's. So, so we, uh, myself and Brian, and a couple more, and I will be going to Ontario next spring. Yeah. The Rotary Club of Smith Falls, Ontario, is having a big gala. And they're bringing us up to be the, the guests for the for the gala. So, uh, you know, so Rotary Clubs and now are starting to get us in and calling us and making plans for galas. So, yeah, it's. Uh, I guess people still want even if they want to hear it, as much as as American people want to hear it, right? Yeah. Schools especially want you there either by zoom or if you can get to yeah. them in person, in person. Yeah. uh to talk to them the kids yeah. want to hear this story okay and keep them coming great hi uh i hear you had elections going on at that time or either of you involved in them personally and uh, what was the outcome I, I I was involved in it personally. I was running for position of mayor. There was three of us running for mayor. And, got elected. and unfortunately, I had no time. I never had a chance to do a brochure. I had no signs, nothing up. Because after 9-11, uh, it was only four or five days after, and it was election day. Uh, but uh, but I still got elected, uh, you know. And uh, I... I realized that you don't have to spend a lot of money sometimes in election to get elected. And uh, that was one of the ones that I didn't spend any. <laughs> but uh, I was the mayor for 21 years. So uh, I, I, I I guess they saw something after that and still elected me. So, but I decided in 2017 to move on and do other things, do traveling and that, and I moved away. Yeah. You'll look, if you see the documentary put it in the main streets and so on, you can the campaign signs up around Square and, and whatever else. Yeah. And I think the advance poll was the Saturday as the passengers were leaving, because there's an advance poll before the actual election. And yeah, that was that was at the town hall, because that was in amongst my food request announcements. The hockey canceled, the advance poll was on, uh, raincoats, because the rain sat. <laughs> you know the stuff you do on live tv uh the other thing too like 
situation was changing so much that it was not uncommon to have uh because you only got a shot line from here up so to the desk is not actually on tv and paper passed up the leg act and so on because what you had to report is that had changed had changed in that length of time things like where the people were going to back nowhere home where they were going to uh some were going there some were going there and that was changing but the day that the airspace opened and i got that breaking announcement man oh man a little bit of sweat and a few tears and, and but you yeah. know you also reassure people that they're not all leaving the one time the uh all the uh the, all the u.s planes that left europe when they departed from Ghana, they went back to Europe. they did not go to their destination in the united states so if you were left paris and on the way to dallas when you and you went back to Paris. Went back to Paris for another three days before it got on. It was only the aircraft that left the United States and was going to the destination in the United States. They went ahead, but everything from Europe was sent back. Like Kevin and Kevin were on Air France. Yeah. They were in Gander. They were on their way back, back to New York. New York. Uh, they were sent back to Paris. Back to Paris. Whereas Bev Bass's plane, he was allowed to go. Yeah, to the but the whole get the plane out of the sky they weren't joking and it was done very quickly if you get a chance to look at the traffic control footage and you can see all the little dots they all line up and then all of a sudden the sky is empty and it's eerie it's really eerie to see like just like drop down the rabbit hole like you can smell the jet and you you know you, you can see the lights the approach lights which is uncharacteristic and gander but approach lights approach lights approach lights and get down As a matter of fact even one of our air one of our runways turned into uh a, a, a and they brought them in and they angled them slightly to get more in there you know it it was uh it was a busy 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 time uh, president bush came up to Alfax and there was 20 of us from Canada was flown over to Alfax to meet the president and he thanked Atlantic Canadians for helping the U.S. citizens. So, uh, you know, that was a, a, a very touching moment too. I mean, he was very emotional and he, you know, he didn't thank us enough. His father used to come to Gander when he was president. He used to go sit in the Gander River. And he talked to me about at the time that the Secret Service were stuck in the mud down at the Salmon River. And the RCMP had to go down and out and get it, get it out. So the president talked to me about that, you know. And, uh, so, you know, that was uh, it was very good of him. He didn't need to do it, but, he started, you know, we thanked him for that. And I mean, our first trip to New York, uh, two Canadian prime ministers were there, and we were invited by the current prime minister to be in the audience with them to, to watch you know, performance of, of "Come From Away." And Gretchen and, and Trudeau were both there. We got to meet both of them. Yeah, Mr. Yes, Sitting, and also that Ivanka Trump was there representing yes. the United States at Canada night in uh, the hundred and twenty-five UN ambassador. 125 ambassadors there a bunch of canadian members of parliament it was yeah, yeah it was kind of a who's who with a lot of security that night it was the first time that all those people never got very much attention which is weird to get your head around i know no, no. okay anything else thank you i I want to thank you very, very much for taking the time to join us this morning. Um, you know, those of us that are old enough to remember 9-11 will never forget. No. Uh, those of us that have seen the play will never forget what you did, what your community did for um, for everybody that, that, that was involved. So I want to thank you personally. Uh, I do have something that I want to send you, a thank you gift. Uh, so, Corey, if you can get their address. Uh, we'll get that taken care of. And, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave Haley Cole. Actually, you can just send them to my place. Just send them to, to, to Brian's and we'll get them. Get them address and be fine. If what you send Claude is nicer than what you send me, I'll keep Claude. I'll keep Claude's too. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I'm going to extend um, a personal invitation. If you ever come to Phoenix area, come visit Gilbert, Arizona. It's not quite as as uh, clean and wholesome, and, and we have to lock our doors and take our keys in. But oh, uh, help, help. it's a pretty good place to, to visit anyway. So. But come with us. We certainly will. Wherever there, we will come and visit you. And if you ever come to Gander, make sure you stay over a Tuesday because we'd love to take you to a rotary meeting. Our here. rotary meetings are on Tuesdays. At lunchtime. Yeah. 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 And yes, we eat well. Yeah. Yeah. And a genuine promise. Also, and give us an extra day, too, because there's a little ceremony I'd really like to put you through. Uh, it's not near as bad yet. The yes, you've you got to kiss yes, the fish. Yes, you have to kiss the fish, amongst a bunch of other things. It's life-giving. It's beautiful. Everybody raves over it. And if you come up, as Rotarian, any Rotarian, just let us know. Any Rotarian would take you in your home, and uh, we would uh, be glad entertain to. you and be happy to do it for you. And you're probably going to eat there, too. So, too. yeah. As I tell everybody, bring at least one pair of stretchy pants with you, because that's what you're wearing on the way home. Yeah. 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 Well, again, we appreciate you taking time to join us this morning. Keep Thank up you. the good work. We uh, we are very, very thankful for everything that you did. And um, again, oh. uh, heartfelt thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anytime, guys. It's been our pleasure. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining. I appreciate Thank you so much. Yeah. Stay in touch. Yeah. Thank you. See you Bye. later. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday. Thank you. Oh, didn't make it. <laughs> you told oh, me that. You say your birthday. Yeah. yeah. Sing. Sure. Let's sing. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Corey. Happy birthday to you. Now you didn't get to the International, Corey. International. Feel free to cry. We make everybody cry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Cheers, Bye. guys. Bye. Bye. Okay. We'll let you guys hang out. Oh, we're going to keep on with our meeting. Oh, oh okay. I'm going to. Okay. <laughs> Happy meeting. You know, this style. There you Thanks, go. Yeah. Thanks, Here. guys. Bye. We're okay. gone. We're okay. gone. Bye. <laughs> Oh, hang on. That's me. Right. Make, yeah. uh, make final request for volunteers Saturday morning. Okay, speak up. Um, Jim, we're still short a couple people for Midwest Food Bank on Saturday morning. And uh, those that have done it before know it's not too demanding or strenuous. Show up early, you can get free coffee and pastry. And it's uh, very social. We're sitting at tables, putting labels. I think uh, an elementary school child would probably do what we do as well as not better. Let me get it straight. So just I need I need to send a list of names and I've only got five so far. So if anybody can, can make it, just please let me know. The, the ones I have so far are Toyin, Kurt, myself, and two people from the Sun Lakes Club, the president, Stephen Fair, and his daughter. So we've only got three people from this club. Mark, I'll be there. This Mark, I had, I'd emailed as well. This is Debbie. I'll be there. You got Debbie and, Thank you, Corey. Debbie and Corey. Debbie oh, and Corey. Corey also? Yep. Yes. Okay, well, that's that's two. Thank you, ladies. And we can, uh, we can Queen Creek if we have any. We'll see you Saturday morning. Thank you. Sounds good. All right. Um, Oh, it is that close. Um, a couple of things. We will meet here next Thursday for our, our assembly meeting. There is a meeting tomorrow morning. I'll, we'll conduct it on a board meeting tomorrow morning at um, Gilbert House. And I'll do that. Corey, you're going to have you're going to have us online, right? Yes, and that way okay. Debbie can join as well. And I'll call in. Um, we are still working on the fourth Thursday event. Uh, have, you, have you heard anything back, Corey? I'll continue to follow up with Sun Lakes. So again, uh, uh, D2 is ready to go. We can get a space if we need to. Um, I haven't put anything out yet because we were waiting to see if Sun Lakes was going to join us to determine date and time and place. 
All right, we'll keep that. We'll keep that coming. Um, is there anything else for the good of the order? Did you want to mention the uh, Queen Creek event tonight? Go, go ahead. There's an event. <laughs> I think it starts at six o'clock at the council chambers. Correct. In Queen Creek, it's the uh, raising children. resilient children uh, program that addresses the uh, young people suicide issue in that community and elsewhere. And uh, I think they've got well, there's plenty of people coming, but uh, it would be nice to show our support. Do you have an idea of how many people are going to be there? Been right up in this week's uh, Gilbert Sun Times on that. Yes. <laughs> Nothing else for the good of the order. Diana, would you like to ring the bell? I would be proud to do that. Are you wearing either? I've got the shirt tonight. I'm going to be on an airplane to Wisconsin. Are you wearing your Gilbert shirt tonight? I'm not sure I'll be able to go. <laughs> what? Where are you wearing? Yeah. yeah. Well, 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 Corey, I see I matched up with your dad on football to the, tonight. Okay. Oh, wait, no. Oops, oops, oops. Right over oh, I don't know what I'm doing, so you'll be great. Right. Yes, sir. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to tell you, Jen. Hickey's uh, email address, and then you want to send her, uh, send her an, uh, uh, registration packet. Uh, Absolutely. Okay, good. Uh, I've got some other stuff to get to. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, George, yes. there would be, be at the meeting tomorrow morning. Yes, can you take us for a, yes, this is, this is information. <laughs> I think days. Ding. Month, and it will be safe. Thank you. I sent her the the uh, ten page. Once I Bring your plastic cap you tomorrow, tomorrow morning. morning. We'll do. Um, safe travels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.